Hi everyone. So what did I do this week? Kind of had a breakthrough. Kind of. I started crawling out of the pit of despair by beginning to incorporate some straight up black and really kind of get that dimensionality. I started to refine my outlines, which is a slippery slope because on one hand you can really get your foreground to pop from your background and you can start to like get some real dimension. On the other hand, it can quickly start to become really cartoony. I literally went in with a spotter brush and I started to outline. And then what I would do is I'd take a softer brush and start feathering out that outline. Like kind of going into typical spatial relationships between different elements. Basically like 101 reflective surfaces uh, in relationship to one another, which I honestly am not very good at. This is a really basic concept in art that I just really struggle with. I don't know if anyone else does. I think like you can develop this je ne sais quoi about the quality of your style and still not know the basics and like how to form objects. And I think it's a real struggle for a lot of people who, even if you have had a formal education, they don't teach you shit, right? So you gotta learn that all on your own essentially. And I'm still learning that. I had this dream where I went back and I visited my hometown. Joe Rogan was there and I'm 5'6". So when I was talking to him in this dream, he was like my height, right? I wake up and I was actually telling Brad, I was like, God, I had this dream about Joe Rogan being my height. And he was like, I actually think Joe Rogan is kind of small. And I looked it up and it said that Joe Rogan was 5'8". And if that's a Tom Cruise 5'8", that means Joe Rogan is probably more like my height. And it's not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just that I had no idea. I, I mean, he looks huge. He looks massive. Um, he looks like a big dude. So that's kind of a shame that I only have premonitions about uh, celebrity height rather than, I don't know, lottery numbers or even uh, who's going to win The Bachelor. I really just kind of worked on, again, outlining and defining my edges, especially from bottom up. And I started working on developing the hair a little bit more because it's quite a massive part of the painting that I was neglecting. And I think that it was confusing me. I had the mid-tone kind of defined, and then I was going in and, and just kind of quickly putting down darks and lights, and then taking a really soft brush and blending that together. And I ended up doing this over and over, but I think that's kind of the nature of the beast. Like, you have to just keep building up the layers, especially if you want to get that je ne sais quoi quality in your painting. I mean, I don't think there's any way to quickly do it because I think if you look at a lot of like studies, there's dimension, but there's not a lot of resonance. And I think that comes from just building up that technique over and over. Um, I think all those layers count. So that's a tip if you're feeling frustrated again, just say it's all counting towards something in the end. Uh, my paint started getting extremely dry on the palette. And like I told you last video, I mix up these teeny tiny batches and now it's like, I, I mean, I'm literally, I, I got nothing left and it's really dry now. So it's like across the paint, painting, I'm just like scraping it. Like it's, it's kind of not good, but uh, I've gotten enough of those tones throughout the painting that if I start mixing up new batches, it's just going to add a little bit more character. You don't want to keep going in with the same uniform colors over and over because at the end of the day, like, that's not creating dimensionality. It's, it's pretty flat. So maybe it's a blessing in disguise, but it is a real pain in the ass. Uh, there was a power outage in my studio, and I use a monitor with a reference photo to work from and I couldn't see that for a while. And I'm pretty sure that was because I was talking shit about Jeff Bezos in my last video. Um, but you know, he's gotta do what he's gotta do. Okay, I also wanna talk about how I'm playing around with makeup brushes instead of regular painting brushes. And this is a, this is a subject I could do like a separate video on because it's kind of a new little experiment but I'm finding it's working really well for me personally because I'm not going to, I mean, I'm not going to spend $100 on a sable brush. I'm sorry, because I'm going to ruin it. I usually buy those cheap Taclon or nylon brushes and just, it, they, they keep a fine point up until a certain, you know, lifespan. In terms of getting like a really nice soft blend, I'm using makeup brushes. I, mean, I have a stash of brushes that I, you know, I can't do makeup, but I have a ton of brushes that I can't figure out how to use. And it's those soft synthetic brushes that you can find 
like relatively cheap at Walmart or Target or whatever, a buck here, a couple bucks there. And they really kind of go across the surface and softly blend everything without having too much strength or personality. And also they hold up pretty ding dang well. I mean, I'm using terpenoid to remove my paint and I'm not finding any fallout. I'm not finding that the ferrule is really uh, losing integrity or anything like that. So honestly, like if you have extra makeup brushes or your girlfriend has extra makeup brushes and she's just planning on throwing them out, save them honestly and and just experiment i mean just use a, a test canvas and just experiment and see if you can get any usage out of them because it doesn't matter if they're super cheap i mean i have a ton of one dollar brushes that are doing it way better than i would say uh, your mid-range price point at least in terms of like going to hobby lobby or michael's or whatever and buying like ten dollar brush i'm finding i'm, I'm doing just fine with a one dollar makeup brush so pro tip um but like i said i could do an actual video about that and, and show you guys what I'm up to. I think again, this is just uh, another one of those weeks where it's not really clear what direction this painting is going in or if it's really becoming successful in any way. But I do think that all the work I've done and accumulated, uh, it, it's starting to click. I don't wanna be overly confident and say like, screw Jeff Bezos, but take away, I guess, if you're kind of in that weird, purgatory in your painting. Start to define outlines to separate your figures and your background and your objects and things that aren't really becoming focal points or are lost in the painting somewhere. And just go in, go to town with like a dark color, go to town with your black. You can always tone it later, uh, but it helps just kind of like, oh, I see now. I, I don't know how to describe that other than you push it to one end of the spectrum and then like everything starts to kind of fall in line after that. I mean, I don't I don't know what else to say other than uh, keep on keeping on. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for joining me on this like pretty aimless journey at the moment. Uh, I feel really happy to share my failures. I, and I don't know where that's coming from. Maybe it's because it feels really authentic to just be real about how much of a slog it is at times. You know, I know we see so much work that we're just like, oh my God, like that, why do I even try? But they have a, pro there's a process there too. And they, you know, other people are struggling too, I guess. Putting in the hours, I always say that, like sometimes you just gotta put in that time and there's no way around it, right? Like we're always looking for the shortcut we're, and we're so pressured nowadays to just pump out work. It's all about stacking it high and selling it cheap. We are not necessarily naturally inclined to feel satisfaction from that kind of lifestyle. I think we are kind of, I, I mean, I think personally, and I know a lot of friends and family feel this way, it's like you kind of want something that has that resonance of depth and time. And there's an unspoken aura in a piece that has, you know, blood, sweat, and tears in it. I mean, whether it's a painting or whether it's a song and I think you respond to that on this frequency that you're not necessarily able to um, articulate intellectually but you you we need that you know we need to feel like the process of time is a little bit more natural a little bit more conducive to like authentic development and growth rather than feeling like well I couldn't get this in the, th the 20 minutes I had to like figure out my composition. So I'm a failure. And I don't think that's the case. I think that we've got to like set up our own boundaries in terms of what we think it has value. And I think we should all just kind of recognize that that's, uh, that's where the true human experience comes from. <sighs> Tangents aside, um, I hope everyone is doing well and thank you again for watching. And uh, I, We'll see you next week. All right. Bye-bye.